All right, so this is our lovely Abaxis CBC machine. Today we are going to wash the filter head. So, go to the maintenance log, cleaning, wash head cleaning. We hit next. We can go over here. Open up our cute little door. And watch it flush itself out. Point to it. So once it is done running, we can go ahead and I've got my Camtec wipes and our sterile water, which is not trash. Positioning. All good. Now it's just where it says grab the pipette so we can point. So it's a closer one up there. If you can kind of see it. Get my hem wipes doing this one handed. Normally I would use both hands and not let it touch. And just kind of wipe it clean. There's not too much buildup on it. Um, this is something that we generally try to do at the beginning of every day. So, you know how well that goes sometimes. Sometimes it will go a day or two, but that is that. Now we close it. And we hit that. back to home and we're ready to go. All right, so we are doing the heartworm test. I've got our anticoagulated blood. I've got the test labeled, dated, and has my initials on it. I've got our buffer ready and the timer ready. So for our heartworm test, it is one drop of blood. Two, two drops of the conjugate. And then we set our timer and we wait. So we are doing our witness feline viral testing for FIV, FELV. We've got the anticoagulated blood. We've got our buffer and our timer set for 10 minutes. So it is one drop of blood into each test. And then two drops of buffer. And then we set the timer and wait for our results. All right, so our timer just went off for the viral test and our heartworm test was done a few minutes before that. So as you can see, they are both negative, negative. Um, here we've got the control and then the test itself. You can see there's no line. And then this one has it labeled for us. So the control and the test. And that is action. Okay. So taking a milliliter of the donor blood. Nobody ever throws anything away, but today they do. We're cutting it into the tube. Seriously. And then I have 10 milliliters drawn up. The 2% formalin. We cap it. Five minutes. We've got our balance tube. Action. Okay, so we're pouring so out till we can get to the like cake from the bottom. Gonna add one drop of 
the the Mechlin blue. it up. I'm getting the bottom cake. Look at it under the microscope. Go up to the 10 DX. And we are looking for the micro area. All right, so we're going to do our direct smears. We've got the slide, um, our fecal sample, sterile saline, the cover slip and our wand. So we're going to do a drop of the sterile saline. And get an even amount. People on the applicator stick. And mix it in. get a good even amount. I'm going to push some of that excess off to the side so we don't have too much debris that we're looking at. Next we take the cover slip. would look more towards this end here under the 10DX to see what we find. We are going to do our fecal flotation. We've got our flotation solution, our stool, our timer, our slide, and our wand. So I already have some in the tube, so it makes mixing it up even easier. Get an amount of feces on there. Okay, we mix it up. We make sure we get an even emulsion here. And fill it back up to the top. Try to get as many floating bits as possible so we can cut down on the number of debris. Place our slide on top and wait for 10 minutes. So our timer has gone off, so we remove the slide, sit down, and we add a cover slip, and we are all ready to look at it under the microscope. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk us through the fecal flotation with the centrifuge. Um, so what I would do is I would take our fecal um, ends, I would mix it, about two grams of the fecal flotation, or so just the fecal solution that we have here. Um, and then I would take our gauze or strainer basically and then strain it through. Um, we would 
then either transfer with the pipette into our um, little tube or we could just use it out of here if we have a big enough centrifuge. Um, so our centrifuge is not a bucket one. Uh, we do not have a bucket attachment, so this is why I'm talking us through it. Um, after we strain it through and put it in the tubes to centrifuge, that is when we would place the cover slide on. We would centrifuge for about five minutes, um, then we would complete it just like our first fecal where we take the cover slip off, we place it on the microscope, and then we look at it. Alright, so this is for the sedimentation portion. Um, so sedimentation, we will take our tongue depressor here, we will mix the feces with just some regular tap water um, into our cup, and then we would strain it through our gauze into our centrifuge tube here, um, and after that we would centrifuge it for about five minutes. We let it sit uh, about 15 to half an hour. And then we have a pipette that we would take and then we would be careful not to not to disturb anything from the bottom. Um, it would be much like reading a urinalysis. Um, we would transfer a small amount of the top layer of sediment into the slide. Um, sometimes it may place um, the iodine on there that will just kind of help you see everything. Um, this is mostly just for the bigger, heavier eggs that you wouldn't be able to see on a normal sedimentation. Okay, is it? Thank you. Okay. I know, hon. Ah, oh, your weird, deep, fuzzy ears. Sit. Thank you. Grunting. Yeah, you got it.
crap. So today we did an ear cytology on my dog Faye. Um, this is Faye. Say hello, Faye. Okay. Um, so she has a history of getting ear infections, and last night I noticed her digging her foot in her ear pretty far. Um, she seemed a little tender when I was cleaning it earlier, so we went ahead and did our cytology. So I took samples from both ears, even though it was her left one that seemed to be bothering her the most. Um, a lot of symptoms you'll see with ear infections is odor, the ear could be sitting off to one side, dogs can be shaking their head, um, or sensitive to the touch like she is. Um, so take it from both sides. Um, you break the left one so you know it's the left and then I always do the frosted tip towards the left and then that way I know on the slide which side is left and right. Um, so you can see me going through all the objectives starting at the lowest and going up to the highest and going up to the 40x and then doing the immersion oil with the doing the immersion oil with the 100 and then um, from there I was able to find a, call it one plus occasional cocci um, and that was just in her left ear. Her right ear was no significant findings. So treatment wise we are just going to do some epiotic with some SSD oil mixed in. Um, I'm going to see if some of her painfulness goes down. Um, if this were a client, we'd recommend taking home some non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, however, since I am able to come back tomorrow if we still seem to need them, which we might, we're a big baby, <laughs> um, I can always come back and get the NSAIDs if I need. So. That is our ear cytology. All right, so um, we don't have any suspect areas on this dog. Um, if we did, then I'd be plucking hair from the outer ring area, kind of where the alopecia meets the normal hair. Um, so I've got my hair pluckers. Sorry, sweetheart. Just gonna go ahead and take them behind the ear. Make sure I've got a good amount of um, skin on it too. I'll be looking for the scabs. Not really. Try to fully submerge it into the medium. see something barely see some of the ends stuck into the medium itself
Yeah. All right. Okay. We gotta be calm now. We gotta be calm now. All right. Let me go for this suspicious looking stock. Hi, bud. Why is your skin so thick? I must harder. look like I always pay Way harder. <sighs> it's not bad. You gotta make them bleed though. Do it with a little bit angle. So we're getting ready to do our uh, necropsy evaluation. I've got the gown, gloves, uh, face mask, protective eyewear for our PPE. Uh, I've got our biopsy jars. I have the suture material, the scalpel blades um, for cutting her open and for sample collection. Um, we are not going to use a biopsy punch on this one unless we see something once we open her that we want to. And I have Mimi here. Um, she was actually a foster cat. Um, we don't know her exact age. Um, cause of death was unknown. She got trapped and spayed about a month ago. Um, they removed a mammary tumor at the same time. They did not send it out since it was a rescue and uh, foster mom thought she was healing well and then we had a sudden decline in the last month or so and she had actually passed before she could come in that day for her euthanasia. 
Hey, I'm uh, Dr. Derez. This cat is Mimi. She was part of a rescue organization. Uh, after being spayed, it was determined she had a little mammary mass. Um, she ended up passing away of unknown circumstances uh, a few days later. So we're going to do a little necropsy on her to see if we can figure out what was going on. First thing I'm going to do is open up the abdominal cavity. So making an incision through the skin and wince a little bit into the uh, move your hands back a little bit, I got it. Don't want to get you. Make an incision into the body wall. Try not to perforate any abdominal organs so we don't get the smell just yet. Next thing I'm going to do is kind of take stuff out to visually inspect it. So this is our omentum, some fat in there, and all of our intestines are in there. So we'll get a good look at the liver, which looks pretty normal. Our spleen should be right here, which looks normal as well. Take a good look at each kidney. There's our left kidney. And then this over here is our right kidney. More liver back there. All right, so this is our stomach. I'm gonna tear through some of this momentum. There we go. Stomach going to the pylorus. And this is our duodenum. We're going to kind of try to trace this around. Uh, stop it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get some samples. So we'll sample our liver and our spleen. Um, we're going to get a few sections. So you wanna get a minimum of about a centimeter. And then we are gonna put them in a, go for the bigger one, this one, yeah. Wanna make sure you have an adequate number of formalin. Try to drop it in there without it splashing us. So I'm going to get uh, sections from a few different liver lobes. That way if there is disease uh, and it's confined to one liver lobe or two liver lobes, we don't, don't miss it. thing we're going to get the spleen. Since the spleen is pretty small, we'll just remove the entire thing. So, whoops. I'm going to cut it kind of along the omentum to get it all out. And we'll put it in the formalin. All right, there's our samples. Writing everything on it. Okay. This was our uh, sample of the spleen that liver that Alyssa is going to label. And next is our sample of the samples of the liver that Alyssa is going to label.
Uh, since the cat died suddenly, uh, I want to, you know, make sure we don't have any respiratory disease, especially with the mammary mass. Could worry about metastasis to the, to the lungs. Open this up a little more. We'll actually get some samples of the lungs as well. And just these edges of the lungs look a little strange to me. Grab a little biopsy jar. Probably grab one more little sample. Blade's getting a little dull. Alright. Okay, you can stop it. But for uh, cremation, so we are just gonna um, do kind of a sew her back up, so suture her back up that way she's not cremated like this. Beginning to make the incision to remove the head. Bend. Bend. No. No. Oh, yes. Just don't stab yourself. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to find our curve. You have to separate the base of the skull. to find the articulation surface. of the head. How we package the body up is a normal cremation and we hold the head for the city to pick up because they will be the ones doing the rabies. Alright, so we are triple bagging and putting in the fridge to hold for the city. You're triple bagging with the black bags. Alright, so this is Darren 
he is going to triple bag our head and place it in the freezer to hold for the food. Fridge. Fridge. That is to be refrigerated, not frozen. Oh. Alright, so we're going to do our vaginal cytology. Clean and prep the area. Here. Juice box. Wait for our patient to put tap dance in. Then our sterile swab, and we are going to moisten. <laughs> All right. Oh, go in first at a vertical angle and horizontally. Swabbing the inside. Okay, back out. We've got our slide. Gently roll everything up to it. Alright, can't fit anything with these gloves on. Stain the vaginal cytology slide. So, doing the 20 dips in the age. So I'm seeing some uh, intermediate cells, um, some paramecial cells, uh, no superficial cells, and um, no red blood cells. Looks like we are in an esterus right now. All right, so we can take three to five drops from the donor's um, centrifuged one. Packed blood cells. Three. And we're going to do the same for the recipient. And then I've got uh, the 10 mils of the sodium chloride. Just gonna add it to each.
And then we are going to centrifuge them for five minutes. So uh, we finished spinning. Um, we are going to rewash them. So we're going to dump out this top part. And then we are going to resuspend another 10 milliliters. And we are going to do this one to the donor as well. And then we will repeat this process until we have a clear top portion. spin them again for another five minutes and again we'll repeat it until we have a uh, clear top portion all right so we're gonna dump the rest of the soup in it off. And then I'm going to add a couple drops of the saline to resuspend. So when I work with Bob, okay. So when I work Sundays, she used to have me work um, like two days a week before. So They're not. And um, <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to start with the minor cross match. So. With the minor cross match, we are going to do two drops of the donor plasma from the red tube. two drops of the recipient from this tube. <laughs> <laughs> this will, that will not reach. Um, and we don't have curved tip. All right, got an 18 gauge so we don't lice any of the cells since we will not reach. All right, and then two drops from the recipient. Now we are doing the major cross match. So take two drops from the recipient plasma. drops from the donor. <coughs> 
All right, and then I'm gonna cap these. So now we've got the control ones. So we're gonna repeat it with the control donor plasma and then the donor cells. And we need to do the control recipient. Without knocking everything over. Kitty kitty. <laughs> so two drops. again and so we want to let them sit for 15 to 30 minutes so we've got the timer set for 20 so now we just wait for that to go off and then we will look at our slides all right so um, we let it sit um, at room temperature for tw about 20 25 minutes um, and then we centrifuge again for another minute or two um, don't see any reaction happening in the tube so far, but we're gonna check it on the slide just to make sure. So here's the major cross match. And then we've got the minor. And then here's our donor control. Now one drop. And then our recipient control. So micro slides all right so um, we're not seeing any reaction of evidence in the major or minor so it looks like we are a match um, gonna check under well, see, there are some flakes in there um, We'll look under the uh, microscope to see if we see anything. Okay, so um, we put a slide on it just to verify, but um, everything is moving pretty evenly. There's no major clumping or anything. Um, and then we want to check these ones under the microscope, see if we see anything weird. <laughs> So we lifted all these under the slide. Um, gonna give it a zero grade. Um, we didn't see any clumping or uh, glutenation. Um, no hemolysis. And that one isn't wanting to show up, but um, I do have a video of the major cross match one. Um, I've got the minor up right now. Uh, we looked at the major one under the 40 so we could see a little more detail, um, but you can see the slides with the 10. <laughs> oh. <coughs> God damn it.